Welcome to my world. I have no idea what to expect on this. It is a vacuum cleaner. This thing is gonna suck. I've come to see Rick today to restore my Safeway Flyer wagon. I mean, that's beyond rare. It was a Christmas present in 1946. For his sentimental value, it's priceless. Have we looked in the bottom yet? Found out what's down there? No. There's no telling what's inside this thing. You ready? <laughs> wow, that is awesome! Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. I love what I do. Every day, someone comes in with a piece of their history to get restored. And sometimes, it really brings me back to when I was a kid, too. Wow, Safeway Flyer, I mean, that's, that's an oldie but a goodie, yes, huh? it certainly is. I've come to see Rick today to restore my Safeway Flyer wagon. It was a Christmas present given to me in 1946. You know, if you think about it, this was the staple for kids. I mean, just a wagon would make everybody happy. That sure made me awfully happy, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I remember hauling coal when it was in the basement for my father to take to the furnace. All right. Sand for the sandbox. Uh -huh. uh, give rides to the pretty four and five year old girls <laughs> in the neighborhood, you know, things like that. Here's a picture of me in the spring of 1947. And that's my father off to the side. It's black and white though, so I don't know what color the wagon was. No. Buried <laughs> right. beneath that was oh, the original bill of sale made out to my mother, November 1946, and it cost $16.95. That's giving me good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> right. This thing is an awesome wagon. I mean, they only made these things for a year before they went out of business. For a toy, it's worth a lot. For his sentimental value, it's priceless. I mean, everything about it, it says 40s on it. I mean, you look at the front end, you know, it's all swooped down. The wheels themselves, because they're original and they say save way on them, I mean, that's beyond rare. Thing I would like you to put back on here, even though it wasn't original, is this Hudson nameplate. Oh, yeah. My father worked for the Hudson Motor Car Company, and I wanted to have a wagon just like his car. Oh. So this was original body trim right. on a Hudson. Right. He did a good job of putting it on. I mean, it looks like it belonged on mm -hmm. there. Hudson was a car company based out of Detroit in the early 1900s. They wanted to produce cars that were more affordable, under $1,000. So besides the chrome emblem, everything on it, we just want totally original, from the wheels all the way up. Right. The wagon overall looks pretty good. I mean, it's not beat up. I can see it probably got rusted inside here a little bit in surface mm -hmm. rust. But whatever I do as far as taking the paint off, and we have maybe an hour, hour and a half in it. The wheels and stuff like that, what we're gonna do is we'll take them and blast them with walnut, which won't penetrate that rubber, mm -hmm. and it'll make it look like a brand new tire. And then we'll go to the body shop, probably have four hours in the body shop, make sure it's perfect. And all that put together, I'll probably have $600 in it. Okay. Good. Right. <laughs> it's a deal. I appreciate right. you bringing it in. Oh, thank you. Come on in and we'll do some paperwork. Okay. The Safeway Flyer really evokes so many memories, and I am so looking forward to coming back and seeing it perfectly restored. Today we got a wagon from a customer. It should be a pretty easy project, so Rick's gonna let me tear it down. It's about time I get more responsibility around here. It looks pretty easy to me. How hard can it be? Hey, Jen! This thing turned out to be harder than it looked, so I'm gonna have to get some help. Let's just set these bolts. The heads of the screws were screwed up. We're gonna have to heat them up. The torch. When I hop, I'll help you. All right. So I don't really know the science behind it, but when you heat up the bolts, it comes off easier. It's weird, I don't understand it. Did you have one of these when you were a kid? Yeah, I did. When I was really young, when I had a dog, I used to deliver newspapers, and I put my newspapers in the wagon and I'd tie the wagon to his leash, and he'd pull the newspapers for me. Sounds pretty smart to me. Now this pinch, you just pop through it, yep. Do you remember all the details, that you're not taking all the pictures? Yeah, I got mine pictures. Mine pictures. Now, how are you going to share those with us? You got to come ask me. You're an idiot. If there's two things I like, 
is unusual items and repeat customers. And no repeat customer comes in with more unusual items than Mark. I recently restored a strong box for him, and now he's bringing in another piece from the museum. I came to Rick's restoration today to have him restore another one of our artifacts. What the hell is that? <laughs> it is a vacuum cleaner that was used during the heyday of the railroad in the teens, 20s, and 30s. Perhaps the original shop vac. That's quite the vacuum. That looks like, what did they use that for? When the trains came in at night, the coach cleaning crews would vacuum out the trains, and this is the vacuum that they used. A lot of people in this country love old trains for a lot of reasons. To me, it's a reminder of how we used to build big, powerful, reliable machinery. There had to be like a 50-foot vacuum cleaner hose. Right. What year? 1915. Holy moly. Do you have the instruction manual for this, or am uh, I just going to have to... You're going to have to punch. Puzzle. Puzzle. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Yeah, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought it here, now you want me to figure it out. I've worked on a lot of pieces from the early 20th century, but I've never worked on a project that didn't have a surprise for me. So how long was it in service? Until July 31st, 1941. After that, it was pushed into a shed and uh, sort of forgotten about. So, it, you know, it stopped in time. So what do you think's inside of it? A lot of trash. Cigarette butts. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can only imagine. We could find some old coins in there. You just never know what you're going to find in old things like this. I mean, it's been sitting around for 50 years. You could find coins, bugs, fingernails. You just never know. Restoration. OK. One way or another, this thing is going to suck. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be so much work. There's a lot of experimental stuff going on. And then there's the manual labor. Probably 20 hours of sandblasting, eight hours of body work and then probably six hours of painting. And then who knows how much time it's gonna take me to put it together. With all that in consideration, I'm looking right around 5,800 to get okay. the whole thing restored. <laughs> Great. All right. Cool. Okay. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Appreciate I'll get the guys to unload it. Let's come on in. All right. And we'll do the paperwork. All right. Mark actually wants to use this on his trains at his museum. So I need to become an expert on early 20th century train vacuums real fast. Easier said than done. Come on. All right, hang up. We're in the final stretch of this wagon. Find anything, cowboy? There ain't no pictures of a wagon even on here. When Bradley was tearing this thing down, he didn't take any pictures at all. This is scary I've worked on a lot of pieces from the early 20th century, but I've never worked on a project that didn't have a surprise for me. How much you want to bet this end sucks? Uh, this bolt sucks. One of our customers asked us to restore a train vacuum that was built in 1915. The last time this thing was used was 1941. So it's been sitting in a shed ever since. Cowboy, how much you want to bet this end sucks? Ah, this bolt sucks. <laughs> Perfect. Sweet. Have we looked in the bottom yet? Found out what's down there? No. Let's go ahead and uh, figure out how this bottom comes off. Mark seemed to think there were some really cool relics inside this thing. And I gotta admit, I'm thinking the same thing. The last time this thing was used was 1941. There was war going on, people moving all over the country. There's no telling what's inside this thing. You ready? <laughs> There's nothing in it. It's nice and clean. I swear to God, this was like the cleanest vacuum I've ever seen. I'm a little bummed that there was nothing inside this thing, but it's one less thing we gotta clean out. All right, I gotta go check on something. This wagon is a straightforward restoration, but it has some serious meaning for the customer. Rick said these wheels are really hard to replace, and I can't use the sandblaster because it's too powerful. So I'm going to blast them with crushed walnut dust so I can gently remove the paint and clean the tires. This wagon was bright red back in the day. Matching paint is one of the most important things when restoring an item. And do you know how many shades of reds there are? Tons. If we're off one shade, we could have something that was supposed to be fire engine red be cherry red. And I'm telling you, the customers that I get every day will notice.
The restoration on this crane vacuum has been a real big undertaking. There's dozens of big cast iron parts that need to be thoroughly sandblasted before it goes into the paint room. There's some pieces of brass that Cowboy needs to polish up. Then there's two pieces of sheet metal that go around the engine belt that need a ton of body work. And I got just the guy. Phil's amazing at what he does, and he's up for any challenge that I throw at him. The unique thing about these covers is they were made entirely by hand. They were bent, flattened, and riveted by guys who really knew what they were doing, not some machine. These things are 100 years old, and they're really banged up. I'm going to need to hammer them out and grind down any hammer marks. Find anything, cowboy? There ain't no pictures of a wagon even on here. Oh, well. Let's figure it out. We're in the final stretch of this wagon. When Brentley tore this thing down, he didn't take any pictures at all. Luckily, I have an idea how to put it back together. I need to get some lube on this. Lube it! I can't believe Brentley didn't take any pictures of this thing. Well, that's Brentley. <laughs> Got the lube in the little holes there. There's three simple rules to assembly. Don't break it, don't scratch it, and don't get it dirty. This is gay shit! You get grease all over you. Get that shit off. Honey, red. You greasy greaser. It's all over your knuckles. You got yeah, grease on everything. You're a dirty little boy, Kyle. You got grease on your hands, Bill. Starting to sound like grit. Make sure your hands are clean when you're putting this stuff together. That's a procedure. Damn, you got grease everywhere. Today, Ken's coming in to pick up his Safeway wagon. Since he wanted it to look just like it did when he got it for Christmas in 1946, it seems sort of fitting to get my two little elves to add one final touch. Anxious to see that wagon you've been working on. Yeah? Well, um, I'm, I'm hoping you're as anxious as you were in 1946 around Christmas. Well, yeah, I was four years old, didn't I? Oh, wow! <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, Christmas time, 1947. <laughs> Fantastic. <Yeah>? Fantastic. <laughs> now, can I open my present, though? Yeah. As I was ripping the papers off, I couldn't help but think of that wonderful time in 1946 when I first saw the wagon. Oh, wow. All those memories were rushing through my mind at the time. I knew it was in the right hands, and he came through with flying colors. You know, it's a good thing my guys are better at restoring than wrapping, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So what do you think? Oh, it's fantastic, fantastic. Just like brand new, just like brand new. All this artwork in here, we matched it. You know, took a pattern off of the front of it, put the vinyl decal on, and then we cleared over top of it. So you don't see anything around the outside. Right. It won't come off. It's all cleared over top of. It's great that you were able to save the tires, yeah, too, because yeah. they do say save way Detroit on yeah. the tires. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it worked out good. We ended uh -huh. up doing walnut blasting on these. It's all working again. Yeah. It's ready I, for a ride. I understand the handle was a real innovation of Safeway Industries because it, it was angled yeah. as opposed to being straight. straight. Yes. Right, which, I mean, if you look at the way it stops right there, it doesn't hit the wagon. Right. Just fantastic. You know, the plate itself, we ended up getting a re-chrome plated, mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up pinstriping the inside of it with that black. When I saw that nicely brilliant re-chrome nameplate, I couldn't help but think of the time when I asked my father to put that on, because I wanted to have a car just like his car. Well, Rick, how did we do on cost? Well, I quoted you the $600, and we hit it dead on. Now it is Christmas morning. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Rick did more than restore a wagon. He restored a flood of childhood memories, and if only my parents were here, they'd be very, very happy to see that right now. Really could have messed up our profit margin on this old wagon we did, so Cowboy and I are gonna go set him straight. Cowboy brought you a present. Wow, I like presents. Hey, Mark, this vacuum is one of my all-time favorite restorations. You excited? Yes, I am. And no part of this thing was easy. Oh, my God! That is amazing! The train vacuum? It's been a ton of work. Bradley spent an entire day sandblasting this thing. Phil spent two days hammering out all the dents in the belt guard. And Jeff and I have put in a ton of hours painting everything. And we still have to do the hardest part, 
And let's put it all back together again. You ready? Yep. We got it upside down. These parts are really heavy, so we gotta make sure we don't scratch up the paint job while we're putting it back together. It looks like baby. Sweet. This thing ain't much different from your home vacuum. It's just a lot bigger. If you were cleaning between the cushions with this thing, it would suck up your whole couch. Let go. Now we're getting somewhere. We got a train vacuum that's an absolute beast, and no part of this thing was easy. But we made it happen. The customers here to pick it up. Good to see you again. How are you guys doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Great. He wanted it looking brand new and working, so that he could show the people how they cleaned the trains back in the day. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's see it. Oh my God! Oh, that is amazing, incredible. Yeah, it's cool. Wow. Huh? Yes. They just really, really and truly outdid themselves. It looks like it just rolled in from the factory. I mean, quite honestly, this is probably one of the pieces I cherish most really? to have done. This thing is one awesome piece of machinery. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if my dad replaced this picture of me on his desk for a picture of this. <laughs> See that. <laughs> I've been wondering what you found in there. I'm, I'm hoping for, you know, some coins from the early part of the century. This thing was so grimy and dirty and very hard getting off. It uh -huh. stuck on there. Finally popped that thing uh -huh. open. Uh -huh. I'm waiting to see what's inside uh -huh. there. I open it up and uh -huh. all I see is nothing. <laughs> Not one speck of dirt. That bucket on the bottom, I was expecting it to be filled with stuff. So it was a big surprise to say that, you know, he opened it up and it was clean. We ended up doing all the body work and uh, the electrical box got redone body work. Of course, everything was dented over the oh, yes. you know, almost 100 years it's been about. Sure. You know? On this back shroud, if you remember, oh, oh, it was just, oh, remember how just pounded it in that one? Yeah. yeah. So that thing, you know, got totally reworked. There's a lot, a lot of man hours in this. The cover for the leather belts in the back it looked like a crumpled piece of newspaper. And now it is smooth. It's just a beautiful job. I did not realize there was so oh, much crap. Right. Oh, oh, that is just yeah, it's beautiful, huh? Cowboy just went nuts on polish. I mean, it's an art piece yeah. in itself. Yeah. This right here is the, the ID plate. Uh -huh. Polished that all up. And we ended up redoing all this lettering on oh, here. Oh, that, that is just, yeah. that is beautiful. Yeah. That is. Did, did, did the gold leaf. The logo on the front of it, he captured that. He nailed that, just like the original. And the light, it just glitters. This is the motor. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. See how that, that's all done in there? New brushes, all wired up, all your plates are all polished up. Yes. Pretty. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> yes. I am truly blown away, but the $64,000 question is, does it work? So we got 50 feet of hose, and you'll be able to use this on all your train cars. Cool. Okay, so Tyler, go plug it in. All right. All right. The whole point of this restoration was to get this vacuum working again. Mark doesn't keep pieces at his museum behind glass. He actually used it. Fire the hole. Fire the hole. actually have it suck up, you know, the dirt and everything. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. It really exceeded my expectations. You guys did an amazing job, just truly an amazing job. I never tell my dad this, but I gotta say, when you see the customer get this excited, it makes me appreciate all the hard work, and it's cool to be a small part of it. You like? I like. Fabulous job. Thank right. you ever so much. Tyler, great job. People are gonna imagine oh, a vacuum cleaner, big deal, you know, mom uses that. And this is a vacuum cleaner. <laughs>
They got me a camera. Thanks, guys. That's the shop camera. Start using it. All right. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Say purple. Thank <laughs> you.